Sound design. Okay, so how do you find the slope of a measurement in SMART? That's what I want to talk about today. I was working with a consulting client recently and we were doing the alignment of their home theater. And so we were looking at these different drivers and how to create crossover alignments and what filters we should use. And in this process, one of the very first things you might want to do is just know something about where you're starting. So imagine that you've measured a driver like this and you're going to combine it with another driver. And so you might want to know, where am I at right now? What is this slope already before I do anything? And at the time when I was working with this person, um, I was just using Crosslight because I know how to do it in Crosslight. And he said, well, I don't have Crosslight, so how do I do it in Smart? And I was like, I don't know. So I had to think about it a little bit. So I want to share with you a couple of different ways to investigate this that have, you know, further and further details and complexity. So probably the easy estimate is just to look at where it starts to decay, where it starts to roll off, and then look at one octave below that, right? Because we're looking for a rate in dB per octave, typically. So I have centered this trace, it was like this, but I want to put it around the center here. So I brought it down 3 dB, and now we've got a you know kind of flat line here, and it seems to start to decay in this area. And I'll say, great, I'll say that what if it's decaying, let's say at 400. So one octave below 400 would be 400 divided by two, would be 200. And now I'm kind of going off the screen. So why don't I go up like this, I'll move this line up. Here's my zero line. Okay, so up here at 400, down here at 200. So how far down am I at 200? Well, I'm down 30 dB. So maybe this is a 30 dB per octave slope. And so it may be that simple. And so this could be a really short video. But you guys know me. <laughs> I have a tough time just making short videos because there are some other interesting things to look at here. And this is a fairly easy slope to read, right? Like, yes, it has some ripple, but the ripple's not too bad. You know, something like this might be a little bit harder. It has more ripple. It's more serrated and jagged up here. And then, you know, this is kind of weird because it goes down, but then that sort of plateaus. So we have all these different places that might make it hard for us to really look at what this ripple is. So What's nice is to really look at an electronic filter on top of our response, and then all we have to do is match the pictures. Um, if you guys have taken any of my workshops, you know that I'm constantly talking about the need for comparison. It is really a beginner move to try to just look at the data and just figure something out on its own without any relationship, without any comparison or contrast. And so that's what I was trying to do. And um, so if you're not very experienced in, in sort of calculating this or looking at these shapes, that's what I would recommend. Try to look at another filter on top of the response for comparison. So what you might do is just measure a DSP. So you can run your signal through uh, an outboard DSP that you have or a console, um, or you could even just run it through your DAW. Software like Reaper has many crossover slopes built in, high pass and low pass filters. But today I'm going to be measuring my BSS Blue 160. Here it is. I turn on the noise and it already has a filter running here. And so I see that, oh, this doesn't match. So now I just need to make some choices, try some different things until I find something to make the pictures match. So over here, uh, I'm currently measuring this. And so I say, that might not be steep enough. Unfortunately, my next jump up is 48. So it goes directly from 24 and doubles to 48. So I say, okay, I'll try 48 dB per octave. Let's see. Reset, and now that's not the right frequency. And so now I come back over here and maybe change this to 400. Okay, getting closer, about 370. Okay, and so now I'm seeing that this part matches, but this part doesn't as much. Um, and now I'm wondering, I, I wish I had those numbers in between 24 and 48, 
What about 30? What about 36? I'd like to look at those. And so for that, we're going to go over to REW. And I don't mind recommending RumiQ Wizard to you guys because it's free and it's cross-platform and it's uh, pretty easy to use. So if you're like me and you don't have a DSP available that has all these different filter topologies or different slopes, then this may be a way to do it. So you will grab this guy, export to ASCII, that'll create a text file for you. You open up RumiQ Wizard and then you just drag that file in. And we could start making comparisons of slopes, but there's another tool right away that we can use. We can just shift click and that'll start measuring the slope for us. And so uh, I'm gonna start this over again because I wanna point out to you where the numbers are. They're up here. So they're kind of small, but see how this says slope 38.6 dB per octave? So watch that change as I move this up and down. So now we're getting closer to 32, we're getting lower. Remember when we were looking at it in Smart, we thought maybe it was 30 dB per octave. So it seems like that was pretty close. And the more of this, uh, you know, knee region, cutoff region that I take into account, the more it's going to vary. But if we just sort of look at this area in here with less variability, we see that it is 32.4 dB per octave. So this can be a really handy tool. So I would call that like method number two or number three. And then method number four would be to use REW to actually look at some filter slopes on top of this measurement. So you just open up the EQ window here in target settings you'll want to set that to match your measurement here if you said that's a subwoofer what's nice is that you're just working purely with db per octave which is cool but if you want to actually look at um, specifically what high pass or low pass filter and the topology not just the slope also the topology if you want to look at that in comparison to your measurement then you should choose either full range speaker or um, this speaker driver setting. So I'm gonna choose full range speaker. Oh, I'm sorry, so full range speaker actually only has the slopes as well. So if you want the topology, I think you have to choose speaker driver. Okay, so you can see that I've got this set at 500, Linkert Riley, um, fourth order. And so now I can just start playing around with these, moving the frequency up and down and see if I have a match. So obviously it needs to be a little bit steeper. We know it's about 30 dB per octave. I can't get that with a Linkwitz Riley. So I'm going to go up here to, let's see, Butterworth. Let's try Butterworth. So Butterworth 4 would be 24. So 5 would be 30 dB per octave. And now I can just move this around and it, I notice here that I have, I need to match the peaks here. So I need to hit the envelope. There we go. So this already looks to be a pretty good match, even in this cutoff region here. So I like that, or I can try something a little bit steeper and change this cutoff maybe. So it's, it's somewhere in between 30 and 36, which is exactly what we measured over here, somewhere in between 30 and 36. And then we could even try some of the other topologies we wanted and, and do some research that way. And now that I've looked at all of this, I can have a much clearer picture about what options I have available to add as electronic filters to create the acoustic result, right? Because whatever electronic filters I add to this, then they will be added together. Okay, so to summarize how to find the slope of this measurement. Number one, if you just center your measurement here around the zero line and then find where it starts to roll off, then look an octave below that, then that's a quick way to do it, right? Quick estimate. And so here I have 30, 30 dB per octave. Uh, method number two would be to measure your DSP. That's what we were doing here. Method number three would be to import into RumiQ Wizard shift and drag, shift and drag to get the slope here. And method number four would be to use RumiQ Wizard to just look at some different filter slopes and topologies on top of the measurement. So I hope this was helpful and I'd love to know what your method is for calculating slope. Maybe there's something even easier uh, or maybe there's something that I did wrong here. I hope you'll let me know in the comments for this video.
Thanks. Sound design. Yeah.